seated above, enthroned in the Father's love. Destined to die, poured out for all mankind. God's only Son, perfect in spot. Suffered as if he did. All authority, every victory is yours. All authority, every
You can be seated. If you are visiting with us this morning, we are grateful that you've chosen to visit with us. Uh, There are some visitor cards in the pew rack uh, right in front of you, or should be some there. If you're a visitor, I'd love to know that you are here and would love to be able to follow up with you a little bit later. And um, so when that offering is, uh, plates are passed by, I'd encourage you just to drop that visitor card in there, and uh, that will give me an opportunity to follow up with you. This morning, I want to share just uh, two quick announcements with you. Uh, The Miller McCullough shower will be next Saturday. What's the time on that, Anna? You asked me to 2 o'clock. Um, we did not get that in the bulletin this week. It was in there last week, and we're sorry we did not get that in there. Uh, next Saturday, 2 o'clock. Um, also, immediately after morning worship, uh, there will be a lunch for all of you who are nursery volunteers. You serve in the nursery. Uh, parents of children who are in the nursery, uh, we're going to have a meal for you, and we're going to share with you some things uh, that are uh, related to the nursery and uh, I normally greet people at that door as you go out and I'm not going to be there I don't feel it's appropriate this morning and uh, and so this morning, um, I'm going to ask that you would leave in a spirit of prayer. I know we've got to go uh, do the fellowship meal and all that afterwards, uh, but those who are not staying for that. Um, so anyhow, I'm not going to be at the back door this morning. Um, we're going to have a prayer service. And I hesitated to say that to you because I know what comes to our minds sometimes with the idea of a prayer service. This morning, I asked the Lord, Lord, what church are we? What church are we? And I read through Revelation 2 and 3 and said, as we look at these seven churches, which church are we? And I feel like that this morning I'm to share with you the scripture in reference to the church of Sardis. And to the angel of the church of Sardis write, the words of him who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know your works. You have a reputation of being alive, but you are dead. Wake up and strengthen what remains and is about to die. For I have not found your works complete in the sight of my God. Remember then what you received and heard. Keep it and repent. If you will not wake up, I will come like a thief, and you will not know at what hour I will come against you. Yet you have still a few names in Sardis, people who have not soiled their garments. They will walk with me in white, for they are worthy. The one who conquers will be clothed thus in white garments and never blot his name out of the book of life. I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. One of the things that God, I believe, encouraged me with this morning is this is not a dead church. As I read that, I was like, Lord, that's not the one I wanted there. You are dead. You have a reputation of being alive. And I don't believe that that's true of this church. I don't believe this is a dead church. I believe that when we look at the church of America, as we look at the multitude of churches in America, it's time for us to wake up. It's time for the church to wake up. And this morning, I'm going to call us into three sessions of prayer. They're not going to be extended sessions. The preacher's not going to pray for 30 minutes at a time. 
But I'm going to call us to repentance. I'm going to call us to surrender. And I'm going to call us to desperation. This morning, I want to share with you some scriptures that the Lord has been giving me over the next, over the last couple of weeks. Why do we need to begin with repentance? We need to begin with repentance because God is not going to hear the prayers of the wicked. And that might set some of you back. You might not appreciate hearing that. But that is what God's Word teaches us. In Proverbs 15, 29, it says, The Lord is far from the wicked, but He hears the prayers of the righteous. Psalm 34, 11 through 18, Come, O children, listen to me, and I will teach you the fear of the Lord. What man is there who desires life and loves many days, that he may see good? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Turn away from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are towards the righteous and his ears towards their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil to cut off the memory of them from the earth. When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and delivers them out of all of their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. This morning... We're going to go into a time of prayer. And you are welcome to come and kneel down at this altar. You're welcome just to turn right around in your pew and kneel right there. You're welcome to stand and lift your face to heaven. That is a biblical posture of prayer as well. If your clothing so fits for you to be able to do so, you may lay yourself out prostrate on the floor. That is a biblical posture for prayer. And you are welcome to sit right where you are with your head bowed, your eyes closed or open. That's a biblical posture of prayer too. And maybe in this season of prayer you're going to be in one position, one posture Maybe at a later point in the service as we're praying, maybe you know that you need to come up here when you didn't earlier. You are free when we pray to be in the position of posture that is appropriate for you at the time. This morning I want to ask you to ask the Lord to show you the wicked way that is in you. Search me, O God, David said. See, is there any wicked way in me? And so this morning, if God is going to hear the prayers in this place, it will begin with your repentance and my repentance in this place. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, this morning, maybe there are some moving about right now. And I know that God, for for this time, Lord, we cry out to you to show us, Lord, the wicked ways that are in our hearts. Lord, maybe even last night, maybe there were those last night who were walking in godlessness. Maybe it pertained to their eyes. Maybe it pertained to the company they were keeping and the things that they were saying and the things that they were listening to, the things that they were partaking of. So God, this morning, we ask you to forgive us. 
God, I pray that all across this room that your people are crying out in repentance to you. God, are acknowledging their sin. As David said, God, against you and you alone have I sinned. And God, I pray that this morning that there would be repentance in this place. I pray that there would be that godly sorrow that brings about repentance. I pray, Father, that we would weep over the sins that are in our lives. I pray, Father, that this morning that for some, maybe they have held on to some sin issues for a long, long time now. And God, this morning, you want to free them. God, you want to deliver them. And so, God, I pray that they would understand that it begins with their open and honest acknowledgement to you, God, that they have sinned against you. And that, God, the cry of their heart would be that of repentance. Repentance being the turning away from it. Oh, God, give me the strength to turn away from that sin. Oh, God, give me the boldness, God, not to return to that sin, but to continue, Lord, to walk with you, to walk in the newness of life that you give us as Christians. God, we are told in your word in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And God, we know that as Christians, we struggle against sin. We know that Galatians 5 teaches us that there is a battle that's going on, and we know that it is your spirit it is your Holy Spirit that gives us the strength, that gives us the ability to overcome sin issues in our lives. God, I pray that none of us would be comfortable with our sin issues. God, I pray that you would break our hearts, God, of the sin that is in our lives. And God, this morning, we ask that you would do a great work among us. God, we know that as we cry out to you in repentance, God, you hear our prayers. You hear our cries. God, your face is turned towards us and not away from us. And so, God, this morning, we need revival. We need revival in this nation of our church. God, we have so turned from you. And God, this nation needs you. God, this world needs you. And if the church does not acknowledge that we need you, how will this world ever turn to you? And so God, this morning, in our personal, in our private lives, expose our sin. Deliver us from our sin. That, God, we might walk with you. And so, God, this morning, We acknowledge that when we walk out of this place, that God, our relationship with you does not end. But our relationship with you continues in our homes and in our workplaces and in all of the social things that we are a part of. And so God, may my life be a reflection not of a perfect man but God may my life be a reflection of one who is walking with Jesus